Alright, so today we're going to look at debugging UVM in Verdi interactively and see how that helps us discover more information, especially because UVM uses dynamic objects and those information are only available in interactive mode. So let's start by taking an example from the VCS installation directory. I'm going to take this um, UVM integrated UBUS example. Let's copy that over. I've already done that. And within the directory, you see there is examples and SV. Let's go into examples. The first thing we are going to do is to look at the make file and make some changes so that we can run with Verdi. So first, let's edit and add some elab options. First, a dash LCA to assess some of the new features. Dash KDB will enable generation of design information into Verdi. We already have a debug access plus all here, which allows you to debug interactively. We're going to add a plus reverse as well, which will give us some interesting features to use. Uh, and it's very useful for UVM debug. And then I'm just going to add a dash GUI to SimV so that I bring up the GUI. All right, now just run make all uh, to compile and run the design. I've already compiled it, so I'll just do a make run to bring up the GUI. Okay, so the first thing you will note is that when you're running in interactive mode at the bottom right, you will see that it's a zero nanosecond that is basically showing you that the simulator is active. So there are a few things uh, that we'll do for setup before we continue. Even though we have the plus reverse it with uh, debug access, there's also another option here to make sure that we turn on the reverse debug. You will note that uh, right now we have these blue icons here for next and step, but the reverse ones are still grayed out. So we'll come over here under interactive debug, expand that, and you have a subcategory reverse debug. We'll just check that to turn it on. When I click apply, you'll note that all now these purple back arrows are now enabled. The other interesting thing that we want to turn on is to under simulation tab, make sure you ch check this avoid stepping into UVM code for next and step command. So it will not step into the UVM framework and you just step into the code that you have written. So that's very useful. Okay. Uh, the next setup we'll do is you'll see there's a UVM icon here and these are UVM specific debug windows. I'll just turn on all views. So you'll see there's a resource, factory, phase, sequence and register and these are all your UVM centric views. So let's start off with one of the common issues, null object access. So this is, this is quite common when you're doing UVM and it's difficult to debug post-process but in interactive this is very very simple and um, you see at time zero, no object has been created yet, so it's empty. Let's just run one nanosecond. And you see that uh, we have had the objects created and they show up straight away. In the filter window, we're gonna change from all calls to get calls without set. And click on filter. Now these are the problematic areas. You'll see this is the reason why we have a null object access error because we did not set a value, but we are trying to get a value. So by double clicking on this item in the, the pane below, we will update and show you in the source pane the exact line of code where the get call is done. And you can then go ahead and figure out where the missing set should be added. So very quickly, you can see uh, these are all the items that are uh, erroneous in the design or your test bench. Alright, so the next thing we want to look at uh, that is very useful is the phase view. So you can see we are now already well into the run phase and uh, of UVM. If there's something that you want to debug specifically, you want to look through how the code runs, we can always click on a particular phase and you'll see this icon here, set breakpoint for phase. Clicking on that, create, you click on create and close. And then we can go back to our console. I will type restart to restart the simulation to time zero. 
Okay, you see we are now at time zero on the bottom right. And then now instead of running for a specific time, I'll just click run. And the simulator will stop at the breakpoint. So you see it, it stopped at breakpoint number one, zero, nan zero nanoseconds still. If I look into the phase view, it's now just starting to go to the build phase. Now at this point, I can try to step through the code. And you can see that this is each one of the commands that the simulator is going to run. Now if I switch over to the resource view and set my filter back to all calls, we can see what's happening here. So if I just step through, I have a set and you can see the resource is updated as I step through the code. So this is very useful to debug what's happening and what may go wrong uh, through your environment setup. Okay, um, the next we're going to look at the sequence view. So let's run a little further ahead to when all this has been generated to time 2000. And you can see these are the sequences that we have. Let's go into the first one, our read, modify, write. Uh, what you can do is if you double click, we will show you the particular class. If you right click and say show sequence in class browser, uh, we will show you this particular object that has been created. Okay, so you can see what's the start address, uh, what's the transmit. Uh, and if I go down to the request item, you can see this is the actual packet that is going to get transmitted. This is a read transaction. So this is very useful uh, to figure out what sequences are being transferred. You can see your start time and end time. And uh, the other interesting debug option you have is if there is an, a value that you don't expect, and typically you need to trace back and figure out where this value is being set. So this is very easy with the interactive reverse debug turned on, what I can do now is to right click and you see there is now a go to previous value assignment. So we're at now time 2000 nanosecond. When I click this, the simulation will actually run backwards in time and we are now at 60 nanosecond and this is the point where the value is going to be set. So in the source pane, I can press the X hotkey, all right? or I can go to source and turn on active annotation. Right? So here now, what Verdi will show you is to annotate the source pane with the value of the variables just underneath them. So it's now very easy to see what are the values of the different variables that is going to get set with. So at this point, I can very figure out this is where the value gets allocated to a particular sequence item. Uh, and this is just very, very simple to debug in interactive, which you cannot do in post-processing. Okay, so I hope that gives you a quick view uh, to get you started in using UVM debug in Verdi, and hopefully that speeds up all your debug processes for UVM-related tests. See you in the next video.